This is the Grade 12 IT exam paper for the practical or paper one from November 2020. It's the end of the year exam paper for the senior certificate. And we, in our previous video, did question 3.1, which is setting up the methods for our object. And in this video, we're going to actually use those objects, methods and functions and procedures in our next part, which is 3.2. So we've already done the methods that we need to use and we must make sure that we use all of them because they wouldn't ask us to make them if we didn't need to use them. Um, and if I made any mistakes in the previous video, we'll pick that up. Yeah. So the first little bit, uh, they've told us that there's an object. We've already been, we've been working in the object. We're going to go to the main program now and they tell us that there is, it's done the code. There's a global transition transaction variable, which is of the type of uh, objects that we are using, the T transaction. That is, that's what we busy worked on in the previous one. You'll see here's the T transaction object that we worked. And right at the top, they've included, have they included it? Let's see. At the top here somewhere, have they included transaction U? I don't think so. They are oh, there, there. They've included transaction U and they've declared this object of type T transaction. So that's the one we're going to use. So here we go. 3.2.1. They want us to extract the ID from the edit box. They want to get the first letter of the container size from a list and then the storage period from another spin edit and instantiate the object with them. So let's first get those variables. So let's get those variables. So we're going to have a variable for the customer ID. I'll just come here, variable for the, that would be a string. Um, and then we need a character for the container size which would be a char and we need a storage amount or the storage period. So let's call it period of type integer. So there we go. So those are our three variables. We're going to do some input for them. Um, so we're going to get the customer ID where we're going to get these from just to remember. So there's the customer ID from an edit box and then there's a list box and then there is a spin edit. Okay. So this, this, the edit box is easy. So I'll just get the text property and that is string to string. That's fine. And the spin edit is actually easy. The, the period is quite easy. So we get that from the spin edit and we use the dot value field to get the value. Now the con size is a little bit more tricky. So let's just figure out how we're going to do this. So this is a list box. So we want to get it from the list box. What property the items and we want to get dot like so we say items and we want to put in square brackets which item are we getting it from so how do i know which item well it's the one that they select so the one they select will indicate the item index of that so the item index will indicate if i go yeah item index that will tell you which one is selected i'm going too far the item index that's no, not mentioned there but there's an item index which will tell you which one is selected Okay, so we need to get the item index of the selected one. So list box. I can't just say item index because it'll go what item index or what. So we want the list box dot item index. You see, there it is, item index. So that will tell me if it's a naught or one or a two. So if it's, so we'll get item naught or item one or item two. So this will get me the selected item. The problem is this will give me the whole word small medium large so i actually just want the first character of it i just want that small the m or the s or the l so i actually am going to once i've done that i'm just going to put a square bracket one because if you remember like if i've got s word if i want to get the first character it's s word square bracket one if you remember so if you think of this whole thing here this whole thing is some sort of string i've just taken that string and taken the first character of that string I'm not sure if that's going to work. So let's just display C con size just to be sure that I'm doing it right. Just, did I not put a semicolon here? No, I see no semicolon over there. Boom. Let's just see if that works. So if I select small, it should say an S. And if I select M, it now says the M. And if I select large, it'll say the L. Okay. So now I know that that part works. Okay. Use these show messages if you're not too sure, just to help you. So we've done that part. Fantastic. Then I must instantiate the object using those values. So remember when you use the create, so we've got this OBJ transaction and everyone is tempted to say dot create, but it's not that. Don't say dot create. This is the only time that you say equals to what type of object it is. It's a T transaction. 
dot create. So that's how you create it. And it needs three parameters. It needs a custom ID. So I need that from the CID. I need a container size, which I've got, ironically enough, the same type of name. And then the storage period, which is our period variable. And there we go. That's how you create it. Do not say the object dot create. The object is equal to what type of object it is dot create. If a lot of people forget that. And then disable this button. So btn q13 dot disable. So it's not in, there's no disable property. There's an enable property that we set to false. Okay, so that's the first step. I'm not gonna test everything now. Let's just go through it step by step and see we'll test it a little bit later as we go through. So now, write code for the following using the relevant method to calculate the amount due for hiring a container and then display the amount due in the panel like that example of output so when you click on it it just says amount due like that okay so amount due do we we have what what do we have what are our methods that we have we have get amount paid so that should be the amount due so that makes sense so on this field yeah so we need to call the calculate obviously so it's we can assume that our object has been created dot calculate cost and then we will then say okay this panel is it that panel dot two two dot caption must equal to the text what text do they want they want the text to look like that okay so they want the text to look like that so we're going to put that text there I just copied it and then at the end we're going to put the amount due which I get from the object dot get amount paid as a real but we want to display it in a caption which is a string so we want to float to string but they want that amount paid to be displayed as some sort of currency so it's float to string f I'm actually going to put this on a new line so you can see it so you can see it f float to string so therefore we need a couple of parameters we need a ff i don't know what currency comma eight comma two so let we let's test that now we can actually see something that's happening let's see if that works we're going to first see if our calculations are actually working as well so we've got all those fields um, i don't know if they're going to give us some test data i'm assuming that that's the correct value for the first test data so if i instantiate an object it seems like it's done it and that's so now let's calculate the amount due okay so it didn't calculate the cost because it was zero because uh, we haven't made any payments so it would be set to zero so if we add payments then i think it will set it so let's go do that so obviously the amount due was wait was not calculate cost uh calculate cost actually sent back a value so maybe we're actually not supposed to use the get amount paid we might have to work out the calculate cost option yeah it sends a real let's see if that works let's see if that works okay so we actually don't need to do that part i'm going to stop that we don't need to do this part well, so we just calculating the cost so make sure that you're using the right methods if i read the question okay display the amount due on the panel so i'm assuming we're working out the calculate cost let's see if this works now instantiate the object calculate the amount due ah there we go that looks a bit better and that's the value that they had in their scenario so i think that's the right stuff so there we go yeah we had to do the calculate cost there okay so there we go make sure you do the right thing don't do a mr long thing there okay so now i go to the next question so they give us examples so there we go there's another example we can test that out later um you need to enter an amount into the edit box and you need to update extract the amount that was entered in there use the appropriate method to update and then call the methods again so we're going to update it again so, we, so we're going to use when we click on this we can actually get the value from there so we first need to get that value so i'm going to first get there there's an amount paid so they're giving us a variable so i'm going to use that to get whatever's in the edit box for 2.2 dot text but that is a string we want to convert it from a string to a float okay there we go Okay, so there we go. Now we need to add that to our transaction. So our transaction dot update amount paid. So that's a procedure and we're gonna update it with this our amount paid. So we update it. So that means it'll add on that amount. So that's great. So we add it on the amount. Now we need to display the calculate cost. So I'm just gonna copy this. We're gonna re-display the, the, the panel. 
in the panel, put in the new amount due, and it's going to be the calculate cost again. Display to currency. There we go. So I think that's right. So let's run it and test it. So we instantiate the object, we display the amount paid, and do they give us any scenario? So if we have okay, there's a small container of three months, so that's going to be different. But if I pay a certain amount, make a payment. So let's say I pay 1,200 and process the payment. It should take that amount off there. And it should update the payment. Why did you not update the payment? Calculate amount due. due. That didn't seem right. Let me, let me just get this straight. So there is an amount paid. Let me just relook at this. So that's the amount paid. So that's going to keep track of the how much is being paid, but that doesn't mean that's what the cost was. So if you've paid that amount, you obviously the amount due after you've paid something will be the calculated cost minus the amount due. Okay, so I think that's what we need to do. Yeah. So we know for this button, for the B button, we're not just going to display the calculate cost. Okay, so the actual cost. I'm going to actually make a variable called all oh, actual. And that's going to be the actual cost is going to be whatever the object's calculated cost is. Minus, now I can't minus this amount because they might have paid other amounts. So that we need to get all the amounts that they've paid off. And we can get that because we've got this. We have to use this field to get the amount paid. So that's the cost and we minus the object's get amount paid so this is the cost this is how much has been paid and this should be what is actually left so therefore i only have to display the actual so let's just make sure that we've got this correct okay so that's it so when we add an amount so the amount to do will obviously be whatever the calculated cost is so there we go the calculated cost when you make payments you add those payments to the amount the payment amount so it'll keep adding on and then when we want to display what is due after we've made payments, we can say, hey, we've made payments. So work out all the total payments made. There we go. And we master from what the cost is, and that should be the amount due. Okay, I think that is better. So if I do this and I display the amount, there we go. So if I make a payment of 1,200, 1, there we go. And if I make another payment of 1,000, it shouldn't go to 4,400. Ah, there we go. I think that's that's much better. Much better. So there we go. So make sure you understand your scenario before you start doing things like I'm doing here. So we've done that. Display the amount. We've done everything. Five marks. Boom. Lastly, display. You must be able to view the transaction details. Code to clear has been provided. Write code that just displays the object. Is that it? Is it all to do? It's only how many marks? Two marks. So it's obviously just displaying the details. So now we will test to see if our details are correct. View details. So we clear the rich edit, so it's just going to be the rich edit lines dot add, and we're going to add the object dot to string. I think that is all that they want. I think that's all that they want. So let's just check. They give us a scenario. I think this is the first scenario. So amount paid. So we should be able to see the details change as we go through it. So let's run it. Yeah, so let's go back here. Let's go view it. Do, do, do. Move it to the side so we can see. So let's process it and accentuate it. Display the amount done. So if we view the details, we've got very similar details. But if we make a payment of 1,200, process the payment, that updates. If I view the details now, you can see that the payment's been added. And if I add another payment, and I view the details that's been added on and so on. So there we go. So it does seem to be working and you can test it with the others. Um, I think it should work for the other scenarios that it gives for that scenario. Okay, so there we go. That is question 3.2, the OOP question. Um, hopefully um, you can follow that. So remember, first part is creating your object or creating the methods for your object. And then the second part is using them. So let's just double check before we go. Did we use the two string function? Yes, did we use the create? Did we use that? Did we use that? Did we, yes, we used all those functions. Therefore, we've used everything that they needed. If you come across a function you haven't used, then just double check your work because they wouldn't ask you to create a function or a procedure or a constructor if you weren't supposed to use it. 
For more videos from this exam paper, as well as the other videos from other exam papers, go to our playlists on our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave us a like, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.